Hi, it's Tim from the Arundel Arms, and I'm going to tie this fly here, um, a werewolf. Um, it's an absolute favourite uh, for night fishing for sea trout, for whenever you want a really big silhouette, um, a large mobile fly, um, quite often fish down deep. I usually fish this on a on a on some sort of intermediate to, to medium sinking line, um, hovered over the deep, um, lies on, on some favourite pools. Now this fly is actually based on a, a steelhead pattern um, called a fish taco, and all I've done is changed a few colours and parts of the dressing. Um, <clears throat> but the beauty of it, is that it's tied with lots of ostrich and peacock and these really really mobile materials so it really does move like nothing else in the current. Um, the other thing with it is that it's uh, tied on a sort of classic steelhead um, intruder style mount with a loop of heavy nylon um, tied from a hook shank um, to which is fastened um, a, a stinger hook, an up eyed stinger hook. Um, and what that does is it, it avoids all the sort of leverage that you can sometimes get from tube flies, where you have a very stiff, um, long piece of tubing with a hook wedged up the, the back end of it. Um, and, and I've lost a lot of fish over the years on, on tubes and, and feel that it's that leverage of, of the stiffness of the tube that, that causes that. This one you'll see has this nice nylon link where it's totally flexible. And I've found, and, and friends of mine who fish these quite regularly find um, that once you hook a fish on this, um, it's very rare that they actually come off. Um, so it takes a little bit of time to tie, um, but it is a great pattern, um, and you can tie it in all different colours and sizes. And, and I'll actually tie these from sort of two inches long up to five inches long um, for for fishing in different conditions and high water and early season, etc. Um, so here we go. First thing we need to start with is a Gamakatsu octopus hook. This is a size 4. Um, I'll use size 2s and 4s um, in this pattern, depending on how big it's going to turn out. Um, and what we need to do to make our, our link is to take some 20 pound amnesia um, nylon. You can get this in all sorts of colours, and because this fly is going to be mainly black, I'm going to use black. So we thread the amnesia through the eye of the hook and double it back through like so. Okay, so this, this hook's connected via a loop to loop connection. So once we've got it in there we're going to pull that tight like so and you'll notice straight away that it kicks the, the hook down um, and that'll look a little bit strange when, when it's on the fly. Um, what you can do to, to stop this is to actually push the loop back out, flip the hook upside down, and pull it tight again. That way you should see that it lies certainly a little bit straighter um, than before. Okay, so we've now got a size 4 straight eyed streamer hook in the vise. Um, any hook will do as long as it's a, a long shank. Um, I prefer a straight eye, but it's entirely up to you. Um, this is purely going to form a shank on which we're going to tie the fly, so I will cut the bend of the hook off um, with a pair of wire cutters at the end. So, some 8 0 black thread, and um, think of this as a style of of fly, not just a particular pattern. Um, so you can choose whatever colour thread, um, whatever colour materials you particularly want to use um, and have fun with it. Most of mine tend to be purely black. It's my favourite colour for night fishing, it gives a nice strong silhouette and looks good to me. So I've taken the, uh, the little stinger link here and just put it onto the loosely put it onto the hook shank because I want to now have a think about how long I want the finished fly to end up. This is going to be a kind of my standard size that I would I would choose for a large fly and that's well, two and a half inches. Um, now I can actually wrap the strands of amnesia on top of the, the hook shank to, to lock them. I'm going to cut them well back from the eye <clears throat> otherwise you're going to end up with the uh, a very bulky head and, and, and wing base, which is not what we want, and wind up and all the way back. Now you could, for extra durability I suppose, if you're worried about it, you could double that 
that nylon back and tie over it but I've found as long as you glue it um, securely and give it time to dry I've never had one pull out the only time I have had one pull out is when I've forgotten to glue it so good old Loctite nice and generous without letting it drip all over your table Okay, and then I use a, a dubbing needle to just work that in and make it nice and even. And as I say, I've, I've not had one ever pull out. And then we'll give that a good 10 minutes to, to dry thoroughly. But that's our mount made up. So once the glue's dried, the first thing we want to do is to put a, a nice ball of dubbing at the, the butt end of the fly. Um, choose whatever colour and whatever material you'd like to use. You could just use chenille or, or some frets or something. Um, this happens to be uh, foxy flash in purple. quite like black and purple as a colour combination. I'm being quite generous with the dubbing. A nice ball of colour here. This is fairly straggly stuff. There we go. And now some flat holographic silver tinsel. It's tied in in front of the dubbing. Like so. Black seals fur. Line that up the shank, adding little bits as you go. We've got to stop short because there's a little bit of material to go in at the front, and the worst thing is running out of space. And that'll do. Yeah. Now we're going to rib this, nice open turns. And clip off the excess. Now what I do is I take a, you could use a piece of Velcro or something if you wanted, but just a little wire brush and tease all that dubbing out. I like flies with a lot of uh, scruff to them. It's a bit more movement. Okay, there we go. Now what we need to do is to make a, an underwing. I'm going to do this with Arctic Fox um, spun in a dubbing loop. So I'm going to make a loop here. I flip my bobbin round and bring it forwards. Little dubbin spinner. This is a Venyard's cheap and cheerful, about a fiver. And hang it in there, and that keeps the loop open. Now, what we want is some Arctic Fox. This is Arctic Fox tail I'm using here, which is a little bit coarser than, than the body hair. Um, and I take a clump. Now, this is actually an underwing which is, is going to give you the, the sort of foundation to the wing. Um, and the amount of fox that you use dictates the overall shape of the final fly. Now, the fly, the wing, should end up looking a little bit like an umbrella um, with a sort of big bulk at the head and then, and then opened out. Um, 
I kind of like my standard dressing to look like a, a sort of half open umbrella so I'm going to go easy on the fox. If I'm tying a much bigger fly and I want a much bigger silhouette then I'll use more fox um, to give a, a, a larger underwing and, and a bigger foundation to, to tie the fly. So first off what I want to do is to pull out the under fibres, the, the under hair from the fox. I can do that with my thumb and forefinger um, or even better with a small comb. You could use an old toothbrush for this. Like so. I want to get the take the longest tips out. Okay, I'm gonna actually use a little bit less. Obviously always always best to start with more than you think you're gonna need. There we go. So I'm going to put this fox into my loop, make sure the tips are kind of lined up with the back of the uh, the streamer hook there. Um, and this is a slightly fiddly bit. You want to take your scissors and cut the base of the fox, leaving about 2mm overhang so the butts are all trapped in. And then what you can do is to take your um, scissor points or, or a, a dubbing needle like this and just space it out a little bit like so. Now I'm going to pinch the middle part of the loop, hold it tight and spin my dubbing twister, dubbing spinner, whatever you want to call it, um, a bit like spinning a top. Okay, So I'll do another spin and get lots of turns in there and then I can release the tension and that fur will spin. Some of it will trap a little bit, but we can pick that out in a minute. Spin it again. <clears throat> and spin it again. Okay, now I can take my comb. And carefully brush it, and that will pick out any trapped fibres. And you can see we've We've got a hackle taking shape there. Okay, now I need to wrap this. As I wrap this, I'm going to try and drag all these fibres back so we don't trap any. coming forward each time like so and now I can tie off the remaining part of the loop and get rid of it. Once again I'm going to take the comb and brush comb the fox hackle out like so. Okay, now what we want is a little bit of flash. Okay, and you can choose whatever colour you like. Um, and you can choose to put more or less in, however much you want to put in. I'm going to put three strands in, which actually will double up to form six. This is just a sort of pearly stuff, um, which I like. So I'm going to trap it in the middle. Just a couple of turns on the top. And then what I do to give it a lot more durability is to pull this flash down underneath and tie over the butts. That way it really can't pull out. And I'm going to drag all the strands back and cut them at slightly uneven lengths. Okay, now we want to do our wing. And to do this, I'll wet this to try and get it out of the way. And we're going to make another dubbing loop. OK, 
Okay. Dubbing spin is going to go back in that loop. You want to get some ostrich. Now these wings can be made of whichever material you'd like. I really like the, the ostrich, it looks great, very very mobile. Um, and I'm actually going to blend it with a little bit of peacock, um, which is a lovely material. And you could of course make a, a wing purely out of peacock if you wanted. Um, I'm going to make sure that these strands will be long enough. Just about right. Maybe you want some longer stuff on, in hindsight. There we go. So I want about, I don't know, a dozen strands or so. What you can do is tie it with more strands than you think you need and then just cut them out at the end. Um, it's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to lay my ostrich strand on the table and then try and find some peacock. There we go. And I'll tend to use the strands from the top of the eye feather which are a little bit finer um, and give us kind of less bulk and they're a bit more mobile so I'm only going to have I don't know, four or five I'm going to put these on the table so that they line up, um, the tips line up with the tips of my ostrich. If you want the peacock in underneath your ostrich then you'd put it at the top of this loop with the ostrich underneath it um, and vice versa. I like them sort of kind of all mixed up so I'm just going to whack it all in together. Alright, once we've got our wing in the loop here. Just going to make sure that the tips come just past the back of the hook, which they're doing nicely. And then this is again a bit fiddly. I'm going to trap this wing and trim the butts so we've got about two mil. And then a dubbing needle just to space it out a little bit. Like so. Now we need to spin this, so again hold the loop nice and tightly in the middle and spin the dubbing spinner. <coughs> I'll spin it a couple of times, get lots of turns in there, and then this is the fun bit. Okay. Okay, you can see there's one or two strands catching, and that's fine. I'm gonna do it again, pinch, spin, so it's nice and tight, and let go. This makes sure that all the butts of the ostrich and the peacock are nice and tight. Okay, I'm going to start to wind this, and the flash really does get in the way. So what you could do is wet your hands and and wet the underside of the fly to get them all out of the way. Now once we come to actually tying in this um, well, tarantula like thing, I'm going to drag all of the fibres back as best I can and just make sure that every turn you make the fibres are dragged back. Bringing each turn in front of the last. And then we can tie off our, our loop. Like so. Getting there. Okay, so I can clip the end of the loop off, tidy up where one or two butt ends are sticking. There we go. Now the last thing, or almost the last thing I put onto the fly is a, is a hackle. Uh, fairly large hackle here which helps to, to cloak the front end of that fly and, and keeps all these fibres in, in check. 
Um, you can use any hackle you like. Um, Schlappen is, is good. You could use Mallard. Um, you can use Silver Pheasant. That's quite a popular one overseas. Um, I like Teal or Widgeon. This happens to be Widgeon because it's, uh, it's quite long in the fibre. Um, and what we're going to do is got to tie it in by the tip. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove all this soft under this flue. This fluffy stuff. Um, and I'm also going to remove the side of the hackle that I don't need. There we go. And I'm going to tie it in by the tip. So I'm going to straight the fibres back and just clip to form a little triangle tab there that I can use to tie the, the hackle in with. Tie it in nice and tightly. Okay, clip off the end. Okay, hackle pliers. Once again, as we wind this, we want all the fibres stroked back over the fly. So just take your time. Make each turn forward from the last. Good. I can tie that off. Like so. Clip off the the base of the hackle there. Okay. So you can see how that uh, hackle is actually cloaked and, and forced the the ostrich and peacock to behave themselves. Okay, last thing we want is a bit of jungle cop. Um, you want some quite long jungle cop feathers here, um, and it wants to come down to sort of halfway down the fly. I'm going to tie these in one at a time. A couple of loose turns, and then move the base of the feather, the stem. So it's until it's sitting correctly. That's pretty good. And then I can make some locking turns there. And tie the next one in. Okay. And what we can do is fold over the base of these jungle cock feathers and tie them. Okay. And that just gives us a bit more durability. They shouldn't pull out now. Tidy up the head area. Any little fibres can go and form ourselves a nice, neat head. Whip finish.
super glue to finish. Right, so once our glue's dried, what we need to do is cut the uh, the bend off the the main hook, um, and we use that with our by using our very dainty wire cutters here, very carefully lift up and cut. It's quite important to, to keep the hook in the vise when you do this, otherwise when you cut it you end up with a, a sharp piece of hook flying across the room. So Sometimes it'll take a little bit more force than you expect. There we go. Now the one last thing that I am going to do, just in case, is to take my hook file and find the end of our, our hook shank here, try and get the materials out of the way and just file any little sharp edges off it that could possibly weaken your nylon link. go werewolf that's the finished fly my favorite pattern for when I want a really big fly um, quite often down deep um, certainly fishing early season or, or indeed late season um, for sea trout by night thank you for watching mm -hmm.